Our gospel reading this morning continues in the book of Matthew, as we've been reading. We're from chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. So Jesus answered her, you are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. However we receive these stories, however we believe them, they are our sacred stories in which we search and seek for truth and wisdom. By now, uh, we've all come to realize that the severe impact of the global pandemic goes well beyond the world's health. Collateral damage continues to wreak havoc on the world's systems, economic, social, educational, even the environment. Although there was much made initially about the positive effect of fewer airplanes in the skies polluting them, I now cringe at the grotesque and yet seemingly unavoidable increase in single-use disposables, such as masks, latex gloves, and other PPE, which we all now know means personal protective equipment. Even the restaurant and grocery stores, after working so hard to reduce and eliminate plastics, are right back to using disposable takeout containers and other non-recyclable wrappings to protect against the virus being transmitted to their staff and customers. It seems like for every step forward, we're taking two steps back. Another area of concern that has been heightened in wake of the pandemic is our increased fear of strangers. A mandate to socially isolate and restrict interactions to a small intimate bubble has left many people suspicious of outsiders. In small lakeside towns like Bayfield, Goderich, and Grand Bend, this has resulted in occasional flare-ups between tourists and locals, with the regrettable creation of an us-and-them mentality. Year-round residents don't want their grocery stores, I should say our grocery stores, our sidewalks, and our beaches potentially contaminated by the germs of outsiders. And let's be honest, in a small, rather homogenous community such as ours, those who are visibly different, unfortunately, stand out. We often know with one glance who's from away. It harkens back to today's opening verses from Psalm 133. How wonderful, how beautiful, when brothers and sisters get along. And conversely, how terribly sad when we don't. As far as race relations goes, this pandemic has set us backwards far more than two steps. And so we continue our readings this summer from the Gospel of Matthew, and we come across today's text, which is greatly disturbing. For here we find Jesus, the one who we think we know as the one who offers radical hospitality, who is profoundly inclusive, 
and who extends extreme mercy, particularly to the downtrodden and the outcast. And here he is not just ignoring, but insulting and degrading a foreign woman. Ouch! Jesus! The story picks up from where we left off last week. The disciples have survived the storm, and they've crossed over the Sea of Galilee to the other side, where people who have been hearing stories of miraculous feedings and healings recognize Jesus and start bringing forth all those who are sick. Jesus, back to work after his brief rest, has been extending healing and engaging in dialogue with the Pharisees. He has just made an elegant speech about the importance of speech and the importance of choosing our words so that they don't defile. He has explained that what goes into our mouth does not matter so much as what comes out of our mouth. And a few verses later, he's calling a Canaanite woman an unworthy dog. Having crossed the sea, Jesus and the disciples are now in foreign territory, Tyre and Sidon, we are specifically told, which was Gentile country. As wandering Jews, they are actually the outsiders here. And along comes a woman from that region, a Canaanite woman, who has obviously heard wondrous stories about this Jewish rabbi and healer. We need to know that there was a deeply ingrained national prejudice between Jews and Canaanites. This has been going on for centuries. They are sworn enemies. And yet, here comes this local anxious mother on her own turf, courageously approaching the foreigner Jesus, seeking healing for her daughter. Son of David, she cries out respectfully, acknowledging his background. Have mercy on me, she pleads desperately. Please help my suffering child. Now, if you've ever been completely ignored, you'll know that it's worse than being turned down. Being ignored is a slap in the face. It's outright rejection. It renders one invisible, unheard, insignificant. And shockingly, this is what Jesus does. He turns away. He does not say a word to her. He doesn't even acknowledge her presence. And to make matters worse, the disciples continue to complain about her and her disruption. Send her away, they beg, just as they suggested with the hungry crowds on the lake shore a couple of weeks ago. Her pleading is annoying us. She's a nuisance, a disruption. Get rid of her. But this feisty woman is determined, and she keeps crying out, making Jesus finally remark almost offhandedly to his disciples that he has been sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, whether it's compassion fatigue or a strict adherence to a somewhat ambiguous job description, this is not what we expect of Jesus. Doggedly, this unnamed woman persists, help me, sir, she implores. To which Jesus replies, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. A cutting remark that is not only insensitive, but it's verging on hateful. Where do we possibly find good news in such a comment? But this resolute woman is undeterred. She is as fierce as a she-wolf defending her cubs, and she sharply retorts, even the dogs eat their master's crumbs. In this unsettling story, the Canaanite woman is the underdog. 
She has nothing going for her, neither gender, nor class, nor race. She is denied inclusion and denied healing based on religious and cultural differences. It is a terribly troubling text of stereotypes, stigmatism, and racism. And yet, her daughter is healed. And dare we believe that Jesus too is healed as his eyes are opened to the realization that his mission is to all peoples? That God's mercy is wide enough for all nations? That there is no one beyond the circle of God's love, compassion, and healing? Our eyes, too, can be opened by this story as we see that healing comes through building relationships with those who are different. That compassion grows by sharing life with those who were once strangers. And this faithful Canaanite woman exposes the folly that some are more deserving than others of God's grace. Through the unnamed Canaanite woman's bravery, through her sheer audacity, we witness God breaking down barriers and entering new territory in the unnerving business of meeting outsiders and granting them not just a crumb, but an actual place at the table. And so as we continue to stumble our way through the new normal of this global pandemic, may we realize that we learn and we grow when we interact with people whose backgrounds, whose lives, whose needs, and whose dreams are vastly different from our own. May we be healed from trying to limit others based on skin color, nationality, gender, class, or creed. And may we be healed from the temptation to hang on to stereotypes that prevent us from embracing our common humanity. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, you surprise us with unexpected stories as your holy word. Sacred texts that don't offer a neat and tidy message, but that challenge our assumptions and really make us think. We give thanks for the opportunity to wrestle with your word, to search for deeper meanings, and to seek out the hidden good news. The reward is the treasure that we find, reminders of your grace and goodness in every person and every situation. Open our eyes constantly to be on the lookout for such evidence of your love and mercy. Help us to dismantle the boundaries that we erect, which divide us from others to stop dismissing and demonizing those who differ from ourselves and to see how we are interconnected, that the other is us. Open our ears to the faithful persistence of those who speak out, claiming their rightful place at your table and naming their worthiness. We all belong and we all belong together. When we feel overwhelmed by the needs of the world and want to send away those who cry out and only care for our own children and those like us, help us to broaden our thinking and our understanding that we are all one family with equal rights and equal value. 
we all deserve equal treatment. We uplift in prayer today all those who feel outcast or ignored. Those whose voices are silenced or whose pleas are rejected. We pray for those in need of healing from physical ailments and emotional wounds. Surround in your love, O oh God, all those who suffer, especially those whom we hold silently in our hearts as we pause. Foster in each one of us a sense of gratitude and wonder as we give thanks for the many blessings in our lives that we often take for granted. With persistence and with faith, we continue to pray to you in words taught us by our brother Jesus, our mother and father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen the next hymn is one out of the iona community hymn book and we've sang it in church here before with lyrics on the screen. It may sound slightly familiar, but it's so perfect for today's text. It's written by Shirley Irena Murray, and it's called For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table. Please scroll down to enjoy this hymn. And then following that, we have a minute for mission today being read by Jean Dunn. And after she's finished, rejoin us for the offering and benediction.